New Radio Sports Network and 1041 WRLU. Welcome back to the show with head gamblers coach Pat Mickish coming off a, a weekend split with Team USA. And uh, also included in that was the, the first win of the month for the gamblers. And, and how important was that, coach, uh, to, to get that monkey off your back after some of the struggles that you've had in November? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a grind. And, you know, that road trip, we did not live up to our expectations and, and accomplish the goals that we had in place. So it was, uh, it was an important win on, on Friday. And, you know, like I thought the guys, you know, played very well throughout that game. And, uh, you know, it's just something that we need to build off of now. What was the mood in the locker room after that? Because obviously, I mean, they, they look at the standings and, you know, they kind of see, see things kind of settling the way that they are, but I mean, they get a, they get a win, any kind of win, especially from the home crowd. Were, were they jazzed up or did they keep it kind of level headed saying, Hey, you know what? We still got plenty of work to do after this. You know, I thought they, they took it pretty well. I mean, they were excited, you know, I mean, uh, Cam Van Sickle had two big goals, uh, you know, and it was good to get him on the board. He hadn't scored yet this year. So it was, uh, you know, they were excited for him and got to celebrate with him a little bit. And, and, uh, but I, I don't think they, they think we've accomplished what we need to accomplish. And, and so, I mean, that was a pretty good workers, uh, approach to it. Then the next night you lost five to two to that same team USA team. And, and, and you look at the numbers, um, how frustrating is when you double up another team almost in, in shots taken and, and you just can't find the, the bank of the net as much as that you would want. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, you got to use it as a learning tool uh, because I mean, we watched that film back and, and we had some very good opportunities. Their goalie played well, but again, we, we've talked about those second opportunities and guys being there and we're just not on top of that next one. And and that's something that we need to improve in. And, and you'd have to score those hard area goals. And uh, we did that Friday night. And then Saturday, we didn't get those, those in tight second chances that you need to have at this level. And taking a look at that third period in particular, it, it, it reads like a, well, it reads like the roster does the third period in terms of penalties and stuff like that. Um, I guess, how do you, how do you kind of gain control of a game like that when it seems like both teams are trading penalties? Yeah, and it was kind of throughout the game. The third period was the the high end part of it, where you know we we score a power play goal and then we were shorthanded right after. And so it's it's a situation where you got to take your momentum at that point. You got to be a, a little bit more cautious. Just that referees are are prone to give one the other way after one of those goals. And so we could have managed those situations a little bit better and and hung on to that momentum that we had. And, you know, you go back, obviously, November, as you mentioned, you had some goals lined up, weren't quite able to reach them. But when you take a look at the month, it's, it's easy to point out the negatives. But what were maybe some of those bright spots that you're able to pull out of a month like that? It, there, there wasn't a bunch of them. You know, I mean, other than some individual players coming along, you know, uh, Al Servagno really took a big step that month. And, and we're going to lean on him a lot throughout the rest of the year so. You know, there were some individuals that, that took steps, but, you know, as a group, I mean, you look at those numbers and, and we didn't accomplish anything that we wanted to. And how important is it now to, to kind of show that tape to those guys like an Alistair Magno that had had such a good month to be like, okay, this is, you you played really well during a rough stretch. Can you imagine what we can do moving forward? How, how do those conversations kind of take place? Uh, he's a veteran for us and and he was just kind of got off to a little slower start than he wanted and uh, I think moving him to center has really helped him and you know freed him up a little bit offensively so I think he's excited to be there and I think he knows he's you know just playing the hockey that he thought he was going to play all year long and he's just ready to move forward with it now coming up this weekend uh, the Green Bay Gamblers involved in another kind of a showcase weekend for the USHL I know a couple of years ago you guys played at the Cotton Bowl this weekend. You're in Rochester, New York. And tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing in Rochester when you play the Youngstown Phantoms. Well, it's another one of the league events. Um, and they're they're hosting a, a youth tournament out in Rochester. And and they wanted to showcase the USHL with, with games on Friday and Saturday night. And Jeff Mitchell, our team president, was approached about it. And, uh, and it was kind of a decision that was made very early in the summer. And, and we were willing to travel out there and 
it, it's fun to be part of those events. And, you know, we had a great trip when we went down to Texas a couple of years ago, and this is just another opportunity to get to do some team bonding. I mean, he never flies. So this is a, a fun situation for the guys to be able to jump on a plane and, and travel that way. So it's uh, a little bit of team team bonding. It's a good time of the year to have a little getaway like this. And I guess how unique is it to go to, like you said, you know, you, you played at the combo rock chest, you go to a place that you're not going to see too many times ever, let alone, you know, during the regular season and stuff like that. Are, are there things that maybe you learned from that cotton bowl experience that you'll be able to apply to this one? Obviously you won't have to worry about playing outside, but uh, you know, kind of a unique arena, unique situation. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, the travel experience and then, uh, you know, how, how everything gets a little bit shuffled up. I mean, because nor normally if we travel into a, a USHL site, uh, the visiting team has everything prepared for us and, and we're going that way. So it's kind of been our, our staff uh, working with the Youngstown staff, working with the league to make sure that everything's going to be there. So when it gets to game day, the players feel uh, as comfortable or as, as normal as they would be uh, traveling on the road if, for sake if we're going just to play Dubuque or something. Now, before we came out, we kind of major league baseball does this, but their little league classic where they basically play in front of, you know, basically the, the kids and the parents of those little league teams. Is that going to be something similar that you'll experience in Rochester? Well, that's what I think the league is really hoping for. I mean, the Dallas experience was, was a good one where a lot of the youth kids were able to see a USHL game that are kids that are from all over the country. And, and if you don't live in the Midwest, you're not going to be stumbling into many USHL games. So it's a great opportunity to showcase our league to the East coast and, and families that are all, you know, wondering what it will look like when they're, when their kids, you know, move away and play at a higher level like this. You've already played Youngstown this season. What are you expecting them on a neutral ice? Yeah, I mean, nothing different, you know, coach Patterson's team, they're, they're a bigger, stronger version of most of our division. Um, and so we have to be ready to, you know, play, in the hard areas without the puck last time we had the puck a ton in their offensive zone. Uh, and then we, then we wouldn't manage pucks well, and they got some transition against us. So we're going to need to understand that we're going to get our offensive chances. We're going to get our possession time, but you know, they're an opportunistic team that will take advantage of your small mistakes. Now you played a U 17 team from team USA. Uh, you know, we've talked about before how that's usually a, a smaller team, uh, how is that a difficult transition to go from a, a smaller team, maybe, you know, I guess a more swift skating team to a Youngstown team, which really tries to use their body and their size against you. Yeah. I mean, you try not to change your game too much for whoever you play against, but we, I mean, we knew with the U S team that they're, they're going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit uh, you're going to have more access to the net, you know, even though we didn't take advantage of it as much on Saturday. So you're going to have to fight for every inch here on uh, Friday and Saturday against this Youngstown group. And the important part is kind of getting out and getting in front of them, you know, getting a lead and that forces them to open up a little bit and, and come out of their defensive posture. For a little fun here. Have you ever been to Rochester? I don't, I, I know I haven't. I, I don't know if among you've been in hockey for so long, I'm sure you've stumbled to a bunch of arenas across the country. Is Rochester one of those towns? Yeah, I've been there uh, as a player back in the day. And then uh, USA Hockey used to host a lot of their summer festivals there in Rochester. So I that was a yearly trip out to Rochester to live in the dorms and help out at one of the USA festivals. But it's been uh, probably about uh, eight to eight to nine years since the last time I was there. Is there a place that if it's still around that you want to make sure that you stop by or take the team by and be like, Hey, this used to be my favorite place in Rochester. Uh, I don't know if we have a place that way, but I definitely don't want to go and stay in the dorms anymore. So <laughs> I'm, ha I'm happy. We'll be staying in a hotel this time. Well, very good. Well, once again, gamblers out of town, they're playing in Rochester, New York. They'll face the Youngstown Phantoms. Uh, we will have more hockey for you on 1041 WRLU in the coming weeks. But coach, good luck this weekend and, and have fun in scenic Rochester. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Tim. You've been listening to the new Radio Sports Network.